Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elias from the Department of Education, Hazara University, Manzara. Observation is an important data collection method in more social, science, uh, social sciences researches um, and especially in researches in the field of education and sociology. This particular presentation is about the what, how and why of observation as a data collection method. So let us begin with an introduction to a, a brief definition of what observation is and how observation or why observation is used as a data collection method. Um, observation, um, as we can see, is an important data collection method in social sciences in general, and especially in qualitative studies where um, in-depth data, in-depth information is actually needed. And so this is, this is an important method that, that helps in getting us in-depth, rich, detailed data. That's why um, observation is mainly used in anthropological studies, in sociological and ethnographic studies, and also in case studies, and besides, this is one of the main methods used in multi-method uh, uh, social science research studies. We can define observation as a data, as a collection of data. That actually means collection of data in the form of activities and happenings through systematically uh, observing and noting down or recording of information related to phenomena, related to happenings, and related to activities. Then uh, there are different types of observations that are used, that are being used in, uh, um, in most researches, especially in qualitative researches. And one of these types is participant observation. Um, this is a particular type of observation where the researcher participates in the activities like other participants, while at the same time, the researcher plays the role um, as a researcher and as a data collector, and also, uh, also as a participant in the activities or in the happenings that, is, that, is, that are actually taking place. The non-participant observation uh, is another form of observation where the researcher observes the participants um, is inside the activity uh, site but actually does not directly take part in activities. So we can give the metaphor of fly on the wall. That actually means that the, the, the observer is silent observer and in many cases may be not known to the other participants of the activity. So this is another way, another form of uh, observation, the non-participant observation. Then moving on to um, some other, some further forms of observations that include structured and unstructured observations. Structured observations generally um, take place in the form of checklists or observation sheets. Um, and, and, and basically, such observations take place when we need quantitative type of data or specific data is needed. The, 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 the ultimate aim of such research studies is actually the quantification of phenomena or the confirmation of certain aspects of the phenomena that we are exploring. So observations that, um, that are recorded in the form of checklists such as yes, no, or quantification of phenomena use the structured observation format. The unstructured, they are also called open-ended uh, type of observations, are observations where we are in, not interested in the quantification of phenomena or the quantification of behavior but actually in kind of thematic analysis or in kind of thematic data is needed. Such type of observations are mostly used in more qualitative 
um, open type of um, exploratory studies where data is needed in a kind of textual form or in a kind of open-ended form. Detailed description is needed, contextual understanding is needed, and there the, the observer actually keeps things open and records um, the detailed description of things or happenings and also records the context in which things are actually happening. So a more detailed type of recording takes place in the unstructured form of observations. Observation could also be covered or overt. And covert actually means that when the participants are not aware that the researcher is observing. Generally, this is, this, this, uh, is something not very suitable for research studies where um, generally informed consent is important. And so those being observed or the participants of the research generally should know about the fact that they are being observed for a particular reason, uh, such as for, for this particular research study. And that's why um, keeping in view ethical considerations that are, that are generally involved in the process of research, covered observations are generally avoided. Um, however, in some cases, overt observations might not be possible. Um, and there might be certain, certain uh, circumstances uh, where overt observation, where overt observation is not possible uh, or not practicable. And in that case, covered observations might be made use of. However, ethical considera considerations need to be taken care of while covered observation or observations without the um, awareness of the participants is um, uh, are actually conducted. In overt observations, the participants are aware that the researcher is observing them. And this is generally the more common form of observation that, that takes place in research studies. This again has its own implications because when the participants are aware that they are being um, observed, they might not behave in the way, in the natural way that they are expected to behave when they are not aware that they are being observed. So both of these have their own implications and researchers need to take care of those implications while they are conducting one or another form of observation. Then observations could be direct and they could be indirect. In the direct observation, the observer is physically present during the activity or the situation or the event and observes everything firsthand and records um, the, those, those observations that he or she is actually having. In indirect observation, the observer is not physically present and may use some instruments, some devices, such as a recorder or a camera, to record situations and events. In some rare cases, one may rely on observation of some insiders, where direct access to the field or direct access to the event is, or to the research site is not possible. So this is another way of, um, of actually categorizing observation, that is the direct versus indirect observation forms. Observation has certain advantages and that is why uh, observation is an important data collection tool. Um, and so one advantage is access to settings that are usually not accessible to general, general public. So generally because observation actually helps the researcher after they, they are granted permission to get into certain settings. For example, even generally, um, uh, an educational researcher might not, might not have access to, um, class to, to what happens in, inside the classroom. 
But when they are conducting research and they, they get formal permissions related to uh, their access to, the, uh, uh, to, to what actually happens in the class. In that sense, it gives them access to certain situations or to certain events that, that are generally not uh, possible. Then the other advantage of observations is that um, generally more accurate information is possible because the researcher has direct access to the site where the activity is taking place. And so they are directly witnessing something personally rather than relying, in, relying on other people's accounts of certain phenomena. Then um, a connected uh, advantage is the first hand um, information and so the researcher is not just relying on the perceptions or interpretations of the research participants or informants but is also directly observing so what they are saying for example when he is interviewing them or when he is collecting data through questionnaires and then he or she uh, goes into the field and directly observes and as a result, this helps in the process of triangulation. So observation could also be a very important method in developing triangulation of the data collection process. Detailed and contextual information is something that comes through observation. The researcher has this opportunity to provide details, detailed description, and to provide contextual information or information with reference to the context of the happening. Again, there are, there are certain behavior that is non-verbal behavior that can be observed where verbal data is not possible to get. So in some cases, there are phenomena, there are, there are actually circumstances or situations where verbal data is not possible. Um, and direct observation is perhaps the only way to actually access. For example, um, getting data from children or from people, people who have mental issues, who are mentally retarded, who have physical or speech disability, these are the people from whom it's generally quite difficult to get data through other data collection methods such as questionnaires or interviews. And so this is where uh, 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 th this is where observation can play a very important role in getting data. Then observation like other methods of data collection have might have certain disadvantages as well. And these include observer bias, or partiality or selectiveness on the part of the observer. In some cases, the researcher might be biased in terms of, of actually observing, selecting and recording selective type of behavior rather than the whole process of, of whatever is happening. And so observer bias can be an important disadvantage of this particular research type. Then the presence or interference. Um, actually, when the researcher is participant observer or as observer, non-participant observer is inside the site of the research, his or her presence could be interfering and that could actually lead to artificial behavior or different behavior or unnatural behavior on the part of the participants. This could actually compromise the authenticity of the data that is coming. And so this is something that the researcher should be conscious about when they are using observation as a data collection method. Um, again, because may, mostly observations are unstructured, it is difficult to quantify the data that is coming or even to quantify the behavior that the researcher wants to actually measure. 
Um, and so difficulty in quantification could also be one of the possible disadvantages of observations, observational data. Then lack of thoroughness, not attending to or recording important details. In some cases, the researcher might just be focused on something um, that catches his or her attention. And that could lead to lack of thoroughness. And that could lead to, the to, to lack of comprehensiveness on the part of the researcher to collect comprehensive data or to look at or the, the various angles or various aspects of the behavior that they are actually want to measure. So lack of thoroughness could be one of the disadvantages of observation. Again, a very important um, disadvantage could be the fact that observations, especially detailed, unstructured observations are time consuming. Um, and so a lot of time needs to be devoted by the researcher. In many cases, for individual researchers or student researcher, researchers, it is a lengthy and difficult process. And because their studies are time, uh, time bound and they are also resource bound, um, so perhaps it might be difficult for researchers especially student researchers or individual researchers to actually have unlimited time or to give like or, or to have unlimited resources that are generally needed in in-depth observations. So expensiveness and um, consumption of time, uh, the, the, the time consuming nature of observations could also be considered as one of the disadvantages. Despite all these disadvantages, um, we can see that observation is, um, is an important data collection tool in, in research in general, in social sciences research in general, and more specifically in qualitative researches. Um, we would like, I would like to end this particular presentation with this very interesting quote from Michael Connelly um, about observation as, a, um, as a, actually a source of knowledge or as a research tool. What is important is not what you hear said, it's what you observe. And this actually um, a kind of emphasizes the importance of observations uh, in terms of uh, our understanding related to na natural and social phenomena. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Bye.